and welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us on iTunes right now, please leave a five-star review. Uh, if you haven't yet, please pick up my album live from January 6th. It's available on iTunes and Amazon. I think might be currently holding down the number two spot. I'll have to check. And thanks to all of you who have bought the album, who have listened, who have laughed. Speaking of laughing, I'm going to be doing a couple of live dates in New Jersey, uh, April 22nd and 23rd. I'll be with comedians of the compound in Atlantic City. We'll be at the Claridge Hotel in the Celebrity Theater there. I believe that's uh, Atlantic City Comedy Club, uh, but it's right there in the Claridge Hotel. For tickets, go to compoundcomedy.com. Those shows are going to be huge because they are Anthony Cumia's birthday shows. Uh, and who knows? It might be the last time the gang is all together like that. And then I'll be headlining in Jersey again uh, on May 14th at Tiff's Ale House. And for tickets to that show, you can go to my website, chrissymayer.com. Please and thank you. And now a quick word from our sponsor. Guys, we all know somebody who has made ridiculous money from crypto. Like, we all at least know one person who has made some money doing crypto. Uh, but did you know that it's easy for you to do the same? The Copy My Crypto membership shows you this the exact same crypto that YouTuber James McMahon personally holds and allows you to copy him. It's just like having a big brother who knows what he's doing. You personally don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest you simply do what he does so let me tell you a little bit more about james he runs the crypto with james youtube channel which despite heavy censorship has over 15,000 subscribers and 1 million views since march of 2020 he's told his viewers to buy 26 crypto coins had you put 100 bucks into each one it would now be worth over sixty-six thousand dollars, which is crazy uh, of the 26 coins his top pick of the year a coin called phantom is currently up around 440 times from when he started. That one call alone has retired a number of people, uh, including guys and girls in their 20s and 30s. That means they don't have to work again. Remember, this is all public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify this for yourself. And if this sounds interesting to you and you'd like to join the 1300 members who copy James, then stop what you're doing after this podcast, of course, and head over to copymycrypto.com slash mayor. That's spelled M-A-Y-R. You'll not only find proof of everything I've said, but my listeners get full access for just $1. You won't find this offer anywhere else, but act fast because this is a new year offer and it will expire soon. That's copymycrypto.com forward slash M-A-Y-R. Don't take this offer lightly. He is the real deal check out the site now yeah boys and girls we appreciate our sponsors oh yeah okay you know who we also appreciate this next guest uh if you've been an og long time listener of the podcast uh this guy will be familiar to you if not guess what you're gonna meet him today um this guy is formerly a hollywood producer but now creating his own kick-ass independent films uh of which we will hear all about welcome to the program my dear friend john <laughs> paul rice hello, hello hello hi chrissy pleasure to be back with you again after i don't know at least a year you the were on my time i saw you we were storming the capital i think <laughs> Yes, please, please, please remind me of that over and over again, ever and ever. Stormy. Never, never forget. Never right. forget. That was our 9-11, Chrissy. Observing from afar. That was our 9-11. Worse, worse than... It was our everything. Pearl Harbor. That was our Pearl Harbor worse moment that we we just failed to shot. seize. We failed to yeah. seize the moment. We, we, we just totally... that The plan did not go through, thank God, because <laughs> if it had... All of those security forces, I mean, since 9-11, the security apparatus of Washington, D.C. has been 
exorbitantly protected and somehow that mayor in all of her infinite wisdom you know, they coming, took a day coming, off they just happened to take a day off just, and say that we there was a huge event planned it, they it, were preparing for all of this because the thing is i left that ellipse 45 minutes before he finished to go cover news that i was assigned to do for a live stream that i was on all day so i had an alibi that showed there was nothing i did and all of my pictures and videos. Sure, John. No. <laughs> it's like, sure, sure. That's what you know. But 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 I just wanted to dispel this because um when I walked past the Capitol to get to the part where there was speaking going on about a quarter of a mile away. So we didn't have any line of sight to what was going on over there. We just heard commotion and then the cops and the sirens and then other people flee. There were friends of mine throughout the whole thing. And then we recounted our stories and we put them all together. And in that morning, I literally saw a bunch of people armoring up. Now, were they dressed in all this other garb that mixed it? No, this was these. I was, the, you know, like like typical, normal, healthy people walk past them and tip them, you know, their respect. Like, thank you for keeping us safe. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. I was right there and that's yeah. what I heard and that's what I saw. And I, I was going to take pictures of it. I thought to, but then I was like, nah, there's nothing needed about that. Yeah. You know, this is anyway, it, you brought it up. So, I mean, here, here we are, we met face to face. We're, that's when we met for the first time. It was so in a time yeah. in a time where innocence was a premium. Wow. <laughs> now, now we, we have to travel by night only as we are. Yes. We're a fly. We're all of us are fly by night operations cowering in the dark, mm -hmm. just waiting to be snuffed out at any moment. Out of undisclosed fear. locations. Fear. Yeah. It is just fear that we stand in our cowardice. But other than that, <laughs> I'm doing great, I think. Everybody's yes, shout doing. out. Um, you know, who's not doing great is Gilbert Godfrey. Rest in peace. I yeah. cannot believe I was so shocked to hear the news. Um, that he had mm -hmm. passed away today because I didn't at all. I, I was almost like I, f I felt like I just saw him or something. Um, mm -hmm. It's really, and, it, and I laughed because on Twitter, it was like a, a trending topic. And of course they're like, Aladdin star Gilbert Godfrey dies. And I'm like, that's just so funny. I, to me, he's this legendary iconic comedian adored by millions. Everyone knows him as that. Like, I just don't know him as mm -hmm. the Aladdin star. So, uh, what a loss. I mean, we he was, had... he was one of the pioneers of the time of his time. Only 67. I mean, how many com comedians have we lost in the last year? Norm, Louis Anderson, uh, well, bet I don't know if Betty White counts, but now Gilbert, uh, who am I missing? Tire generations of people we grew up with as children are dying. Yeah. Who was the other one? Louis yeah. Louis Anderson. Ah, oh, it's too many. So. Mm -hmm. I just I wonder if it's going to have the same effect when like uh, if we fast forward like 40 years and our beloved YouTube stars start dying off. I like, guess <laughs> are people going to feel this? When we remember died, those early, we remember those early videos. And Logan we're so touching. You'll never have them, them ever again. Ah! When no, Logan Paul dies, no, of there'll be new age, ideas. Like, there'll be new ideas. We'll we'll yeah. all make it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm being a little cruel. But People who make this about themselves on social media is who I'm targeting. Are you telling me that I should have posted a photo of myself and Gilbert? And saying, no, explaining how no, much I don't have a photo. No, of there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's when people use it to like, I've just, I'm exaggerating that part of it. It's like, it's so sad and tragic because there's nothing we can do. Is that kind of what time. I'm doing right now? Should I know? Well, no, I'm just saying on the extreme, it pulls in that direction and you're just like, Jesus Christ, please take a fucking break. Like people well, come and go and die. There's shit happening all over the world that you don't even know that's horrible. And you're crying over this shit as being the worst shit as it's though reflective of your internal state of I guess understanding you weren't, you weren't a gilbert godfrey fan <laughs> no 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 this is not what i'm talking about like the gilbert godfrey shaped my entertainment as growing up what i'm getting at and i'm being a little mean about it but what i'm saying is honor the man and all that he was like this is a man 
who lived a full life. Be happy that he lived. Don't that's, be, that's the that's, thing. It's like we're 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 doing death rituals and sobbing and grieving. And it's like, this is a normal part of life. Look at what's going on. This is actually the great. point. Yeah, he was very accomplished. Um, I mean, I, I, an entire I, book of work that like comedians aspire to have. Oh, yeah. His accomplishments, no matter, you know, like people want to pick these people apart. And I'm just like right and left and, and make generalizations and lump it all in. And, you know, and what I'm saying is like, we're, we're missing the point here, folks. There's a man's life to be celebrated in all of his effed up stuff that he may have done and said and things you don't agree with or things that you didn't like about him. But he 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 forged his way through onto the scene of the world and started shaping how comedy was picking up in a time. Do you see what I mean? Like yeah, there, there's, he, helped there's, the, he helped the Howard Stern. To yeah. Yeah. Just, you know it better than I do. I'm just saying he he was a he was a man who lived, and hopefully he lived fully, and yeah. may he get it get it better on the next try in. I heard that maybe he was uh dealing with some heart problems, which uh yep. which opens up a whole other rabbit hole we could go down. Yep. <laughs> we all know at this point what I mean when I say heart problems. So, uh, but this is horrible. Yeah. It's very, very sad. 67 is too young, but Gilbert did live an incredible life, incredible career. Um, it's just kind of an icon. There's so many comedy geniuses that, that I, yeah. Made. I mean, you know, when Sidney, like Sidney Poitier, I mean, on the acting side, like when Sidney Poitier died, I never that was knew like that his last name. Poitier, I think that's right, or Poitier, 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 I, Poitier. I don't know if we have uh, French listeners, but please correct me. Poitier, Poitier, Poitier. Yeah. I mean, people like this is the thing about like so. Gilbert Godfrey dies, and what makes it really awesome is if you're gonna go back and look at a man's life, you have still have some time <laughs> in, in what they don't censor to look at that and celebrate it again. Like he yeah. did that decades ago and it still holds yeah. to this day, which is why we grieve for the loss of greatness that left us, but not that it's over and done with and that it can't be reinvigorated again. I, I want to say this only because I'm not in disagreement with anything you're saying. I guess what I'm saying is that when we look at this, Chrissy, and we don't really see what's going on in the background, is that really this planet, this society, this government, this financial system, this supply chain, it's all been dying. We were given a ritual of death overnight. Seven billion people in 2020, in March of 2020, seven billion people experienced the fear of potential death as it was messaged to them for a virus that had a 99.7% survival rate, which was known day one. And we have done all of this to scare the holy shit out of people. And now we're grieving over everything that's dying around us when there's so much life and love to celebrate and people's lives are more than just a, 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 a you know, a, a footnote or an asterisk. And then we go, oh God, yeah, ten years ago, oh, he died. Hmm. And we're and we're standing around going, where are all our heroes? And it's like, it's you, damn it. You mean me? You, Sam, mm -hmm. all the people that have the courage to say something that's honest and true in a time where there's so much bullshit and lies. And, and it's not that you're there to go out and say, you're doing it all wrong. It's like, no, we're, you are doing it wrong. I am doing it wrong. We're all doing it wrong. We're doing it all wrong. All of this that we're like, it's not, it's not that you have to like out of obligation go, I've got to carry the load for Gilbert Godfrey and keep reminding people of how good he was. And everybody's like, no, we're just, we're just munching on this stuff and it'll throw it away. I mean, here, here's what I'm saying. Tell me where we are right now with Gaza, Palestine, and Israel. Tell me where we are right now with Yemen. 
Tell me where we are. Like every place and that they have the taken wrong us. person for all these questions. That's what I'm saying, though. I'm here to do dick jokes. In fact, I got very excited <laughs> when someone commented <laughs> that they dare me to do a Gilbert impression. I all don't right. know. I want you to. Gaming. I don't know if I can do a good impression. I've only maybe met the guy once or twice. <laughs> Your turn, John. I can't do it. That's actually the first time I've even attempted a guilt. Oh, breath. so this means that I have to. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't. That's about as far as I could go with it. If I worked on it a little bit, I used to do impersonations. No, you got to do it. Just you got to do it cold. Um, it's interesting to talk about things falling apart and yes. old institutions crumbling because one of the biggest Disney mm -hmm. Uh, has been there's been so much Disney drama lately, and and it's hard to tell exactly when it started. I think it was when Disney decided that as a corporation they needed to come out against Governor DeSantis. Uh, they call it the mm -hmm. "Don't Say Gay" bill, even though in the entire mm -hmm. bill they don't mention do the word that. "gay" once. It's all about just not teaching children from kindergarten to I think how third to grade. masturbate. Yeah, yeah, like basically like uh, above and beyond. You know. About their sexuality. touching themselves, and figuring, then, exploring yeah. their bodies sexually then, at an early like, age, at least to show the concept so they can we're stop hating themselves. Have, we're trying to not have like pansexual, six, you know, first graders here at least. Yep. And then, yeah, to keep it age appropriate from yep. fifth grade on. And then so this this was a bill set forth in Florida and other states mm -hmm. are are copying to have similar mm -hmm. legislation. But for mm -hmm. some reason, Disney uh, feels like they're so high and mighty, like they should really have a say in, in what goes on in government that they needed to get involved and like protest. You know, we need to do everything we can to, to stop. I don't know how, what they were expecting to do. Um, and now people have sort of come back and now boycotted Disney Mm -hmm. saying like if you guys are anti this bill then you guys are kind of groomers in a sense um this was out of the daily caller via msn uh they crossed the line of the sand demonstrators protest the woke yeah. agenda at california headquarters uh, following Disney's criticisms and opposition to Florida's parental rights and education bill, people in California marched to Disney's headquarters mm. in Burbank to, pro and to protest. Uh, they gathered in front of uh, Disney's Burbank, California headquarters on Wednesday evening to speak out against the company's stance on gender ideology. Uh, protesters sang songs outside the gates, waved American flags, chanted hold the line and boycott Disney. Sean mm. Fuked, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, founder of Hold the Line and the Rally's organizer spoke to Fox News ahead of the protest, saying the aim was to call attention to the corporation's woke agenda. Fuked told co-host Ainsley Erdhart that Disney had crossed the line in the sand when they began to enable those who want to fight to sexualize our kids. They're going to feel this in their earnings reports. Yeah, and I've I heard that already the Disney stock has tanked. Mm -hmm. um, they're all, and they're also going to feel this as people cancel their subscription as they raise their voice. You said right. this is the year of the parents in America. 2022 is the year of the parents, and this is another opportunity for us to rise up and to hold the line. And I think here is a little bit of footage. Mm -hmm. This is right outside the gates. This is an anti-Disney protest happening, and this is okay. A little bit old. This is from like last week. Um, mm -hmm. Happening last week outside of the headquarters but this is impressive you know especially mm -hmm. out in california yep where you figure ah you know what i mean just throw california out with the bath water. you know what i mean like yeah let's try a different state but california there they came mm -hmm. out uh the company received backlash following disney ceo bob chapin's <laughs> condemnation of the new florida education law forbidding teachers from speaking out about sexual orientation and gender identity in classrooms to kids in kindergarten through third grade. And here's a little bit more detail about the bill. Florida's HB 1557. Um, wow. And this is this guy, Jose for Florida. I guess he's running for Congress. I work at Disney. The vast majority of Disney workers support the parental rights and education bill. They may be a silent majority, but they'll be stand sending a loud message on election day. Mm -hmm. so we've seen this we've seen i've seen and heard of more people coming out against disney mm -hmm. and i think disney is sort of freaking out and we're seeing I, i'm noticing kind of some weird 
press coming out <laughs> like mm-hmm. this is today. This random Disney air, uh, d- distant random Disney air. Mm-hmm. Charlie Cora came out publicly as trans and con- and how convenient came out just in time for all this drama to condemn Florida's uh, supposed anti LGBTQ law. Here's this random mm. great. Who gives a fuck about anybody's great great nephew? Uh, great grandson of the media conglomerate's co-founder publicly came out as trans amid increasing outrage. And like, what? What is this person going to do? Like, what? Big fucking deal. Um, Charlie has been out to their family for years, but at the annual human rights campaign gala, they pledged 250k to the advocacy. So this is all just for press. Mm-hmm. This, this to me reminds me of like I, I can pick out a few times where a celebrity's kid came out as trans mm-hmm. right around the time uh, mom or dad was promoting a new movie. It was very convenient the timing of uh, these people who decided to come out. So does anybody out there at this point think that it is not a coincidence that they have gone from confirming a justice with that issue, Hunter Biden's laptop, and all of this other shit coming out simultaneously one week before Easter Sunday. Anybody suspect that? What holy does shit have to do with it? Well, <laughs> Larry Johnson and Jay Dyer and others who are far more versed, well versed in this than I am. Um, this is the ritual time. This is when. So, just if you want to. Just to give you an anchor here, just go back one year on Palm Sunday weekend. Little Nas X does his little thing with Montenegro and the Nike shoe drops one week before Easter. Blood shoe, right? Mm -hmm. That was the start. Well, it started before that, but I'm just telling you on the accelerated scale. For the people that are new to you, John, I don't Mm -hmm. want people to get confused. Like, are you talking about a kind of witchcraft? Are you Uh, talking about. Yeah, we're talking about people who pull in the dark side of the force. You're talking about like the elites who who, who use. Not necessarily elites. No. Um, This is the parts where I tell people to go watch, to go watch while you still can on YouTube, find Ronald Bernard former banker in 2018 gave a 32 minute speech and some change on this time. And he said in 2018, when he was completely supportive of what was going on and we thought, he just said, don't look outside yourself anymore. Like don't look outside for answers anymore. And but this video that you're talking about, this is this guy, Ronald. Bernard. He gave it. Yeah, he, he gave his, is, this video you're talking about. He's talking about satanic. Child yes. Sacrifice, which yes. is like and this might a seem world, like a jump for people listening. They go, oh, I totally understand. Disney. It what is. It is unimaginable. You could dumb this down to the. I'll just dumb possible. it down to this. OK, it's this evil persists in the world because of unconscious behavior. Unconscious behavior is trauma-based mind control. Trauma-based mind control is used as a weapon of fear to scare the holy shit out of you for scarcity of food, water, shelter, externalized threats that are, this is what uh, Alex Stein was talking about the other day, and more people are understanding what this means. It is a spell cast that keeps you under the illusion of the matrix that is trying to hold you through scarcity and fear and fear of death and they gave you the fear of dying and they've continued to scare the holy shit out of you every single week and they're making you debate it and you're making you amplify all of this shit to actually extend the life of their media corporations if you really look at it i'll just give you one thing this is this is practical stuff that i want to anchor here so that we're not talking about theories 1992 la riots There was what caused the riot. There was a verdict in the Rodney King trial and all those police officers got acquitted, right? So then that news spreads through the media in LA and the country, right? Because it was a national case. This is before OJ that made it even bigger, but national case that was a trial run 
if you really want to look at it, at amplifying a message and seeing if you get a riot to spread. And they did. They successfully succeeded. What did they do? There was one riot in the intersection that everybody can go look back at. And the footage is out there still. And all the helicopters go around there. And then they're broadcasting it all over the televisions, all over the radio stations, describing the chaos in the scene. And all of a sudden, L.A. erupted. What we are doing is 96% of us all have a smartphone or cell phone in this country. And every single time they put some shit out, we go and amplify it for them better than they can do it. This is what I'm talking about. And this is exactly why we're in the mess that we're in, because people are killing themselves at record rates. Um, people that shouldn't be dying are dying uh, for whatever reason. The heart issues, it's actually... <laughs> As satanic as you can imagine, it's trying to kill love and it's succeeding. And it is breaking us apart at the seams in people's lives that have no reason to fear life. And yet they are given every reason to fear it. And they instill that fear in their children. What's happening with this Disney thing and all that you're seeing? This is my opinion. Okay. This is not fact, but this is from my perception. When you're watching all of this shit work its way through the news to you, you are chasing a story of energy that makes you more depressed, more mm. upset, more nihilistic. And there are going to be plenty of people who get to a certain point that they have reached it and they are taking an exit. Yeah. I mean, and, not to like rub it in. I mean, but seeing shit like this makes people go, okay, come on. Yes. And, and it's, and it's, yeah. and it's like right in your face and they're yeah. like, you can't, no, let me just, to this. nobody needs this. <laughs> there is, le, le, this is what I'm trying to say because what these monsters are doing is they're baiting you into a trap and I'll tell you what it is. Okay. The right is correct to call out the woke and all of that and woke corporate right. capitalism. All, I get totally get it, but you are being baited into a trap to condemn all these kids to hell. That's what, and I'll just, let me explain if for people who don't understand this little Nas X does his little thing last year. He comes it. out, does a lap dance on Lucifer. Satan comes around full circle, snaps his neck, takes the, you know, the wings and, or the wings come out, he puts the horns on his head and his eyes illuminate, right? And this is all this is all cool with Hollywood. And uh, they're all celebrating it and social media is just having a field day with you know all the amazing things that this artist is doing. We learn that the majority of his audience is children, as reported by NPR just months before. Uh. Um, uh, he then drops the blood shoe. Nike creates this whole controversy saying, oh, my God, we're going to sue him. When, in fact, the, the company that was uh, making the shoe was featured in New York uh, Times a year and a half before in 2019 with the, the office staff talking. They're talking about the office staff sitting around every day in this area where they have their daily meetings. And there is a pentagram right there in the center of the floor. Oh my God. And even this. Okay. You know, like, and you're going to sit here and tell me like, like you're going to sit here and tell me that the world of Satan is not coming into manifesting right in front of your eyes. Like they are putting that world. There are going to be people. I'm just telling you, there's going to be people who fight this, who point this out every step of the way as it comes into further fruition. Positively 100% wrong because you don't know who that person is. I'm not excusing any of this stuff. You're saying a lot of these entertainers are like sort of pawns. Of they are mind controlled slaves yeah. who believe that God is their ego or ego is God. It, it doesn't matter. And they're fed it because here's the thing. This is what you have to understand at the end of the day. You have to go back to the beginning and ask yourself, would a child of God purposefully deceive himself and want to be this way enslaved through such horrors? away from its true divine self when it's born. Consciously, you cannot sit there and say, unless you're a, a, a psychopath who doesn't have any regard for getting caught at all. You have to then go, okay, where does all this come from? This comes from trauma-based mind control through child abuse, torture, how do you think these fear. Kids are, how do you think these people are 
chosen. You know what I mean? Like we're kind of sometimes a little lines. familiar with the like okay, lines. Britney Spears. You can tell she was she was MK Ultra. These are all her different mm-hmm. you know personalities coming out. But <clears throat> largely, you think these kids are chosen from like the Mickey Mouse Club or like they just even they, before that. Like, look at the Kardashians. You're like, clearly that whole family is in on whatever they're doing. And George Lucas. Doing. Yeah, George Lucas. There's a thing on my Instagram uh, about the force. And he talks about this and the creation of it to Charlie Rose in 2015 when Disney had bought his franchise for three, four billion dollars. And he was pretty upset with what they had done with it. And then they you know, tried to sidestep the issue. Um, but he said it very clearly. He said that. Um, these battles have gone on throughout all of history. Uh, and it's always this specific group that really becomes a cult well, and reinforce. If this, if this is yeah, clip. here, yeah. let's play that. It's, he could articulate it better. The whole thing in Star Wars was to take, um, again, um, ideas, psychological ideas, from social issues, political issues, uh, spiritual issues, and condense them down into a, um, a an easy to tell story of those stories. The force basically came from, uh, you know, distilling all of the uh, religious beliefs, spiritual beliefs, go all around the world, all through time, finding the similarities. And then creating a an easy to uh, deal with metaphor for what religion is, and the point was is that the I mean in the very beginning when you have people worshiping rocks and deer they called it life force they called it the force that's what it was and so where did the name come from it came from basically life force of what the more primitive religions believed in. And then you go through all the other religions and they have the same thing. You know, it's all the same, you know, whether you believe in God, don't believe in God, believe in religion. He looks don't confused. Believe in religion. The <laughs> yeah. issue is that you either don't believe there's anything else out there, which is a little, I think would be hard to live with at the same time. I mean, I believe something's out there. I just don't know what it is. I have no idea or what I do dare to guess, but I do know that religions aren't based on it. They're human psychological needs that have been put together mostly to create a society. There's more to it than that, but that's the gist of it. And he talks about basically this other group that comes in and uses those truths. We know he, he talks about this actually, if, um, or you want to go to my Instagram, it's right there. Uh, we could play the whole thing, but, uh, it's under no restrictions. If you can get to it, I don't know if it's easy. Um, but it's important. I, I mean, I don't, I don't like, I think people. Was it this? I know you wanted to, you sent me this link about, I sent story. you that. Yeah, we can go through that in a minute, but, um, no, it's on my, it's on my Instagram, uh, a wall. I guess the post i didn't i didn't post it as a story it, it would have been it there's an image of george lucas's face as a thumbnail yeah we can go down a little bit and this one there he is yeah there we go oh yeah okay here we Come go from. this is the whole thing the whole thing in star wars was to take i could listen to george um, lucas forever again um, i love his voice <laughs> ideas, psychological ideas from social issues, political issues, uh, spiritual issues, and condense them down into a, um, a, an easy to tell the story yeah. of those stories. The force basically came from, uh, you know, distilling all of the uh, religious beliefs. I think we did that already. What religion yeah, you can is. skip ahead Here. to, I think, a minute or so. The name come from, it came from basically life. And then you go through all the other religions and they have to believe in God, believe in religion, don't believe in religion. Here we go. Yeah. The issue is that 
you either don't believe there's anything else out there, which is a little, and then the next thing I think would be hard to live with at the same time. I mean, I believe something's out there. I just don't know what it is. I have no idea or what I dare to guess, but I do know that religions aren't based on it. They're human psychological needs that have been put together mostly to create a society. Star Wars and Indiana Jones were basically put together, especially Star Wars, more than right, Indiana, Jones. Indiana Jones. Right, he did Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones was just done for fun, to entertain people. Uh, and there were some Indiana messages Jones. in there about, mm-hmm. you know, uh, <laughs> archaeology and also about what we believe in in terms of myths. Right. And, and positive thing. masculinity. But the real one is Star Wars. Yes. That was done in the same vein that um, uh, what I was saying about the 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 patron creates the propaganda, and yeah, what I wanted right. to do was go back to some of the older propaganda, which was consistent through all of the societies, which is mythology, but to say, what did they all believe? Because they were all, this propaganda was created independently. Yeah. And mm-hmm. what is the, what are the things that they all actually believed? We're talking relationships with your father, relationships with your society, relation your history, uh, relationships with the gods, all of this stuff is it's old, but they're psychological motifs that were created through storytelling, primarily oral storytelling. Like Charlie Rose is like, get to the point. Explained what they <laughs> believed in and who they believed in. Yeah, the payoff. And what I want to do is go back and find the psychological motifs that underlie that, because those grow out of uh, a popularism, and to say that not all, but a majority of people, boys, have a certain psychological relationship with their fathers. Hmm. And that's been going on through history and trying to explain that to say, we know your darkest secret. And therefore, you're part of us because we all know the same things. We know what you're thinking about your mother. We know what you think about your brother. We know what you think about your father, really. And those are the things that make people say, hey, uh, this is why we believe this stuff. And again, the the crudest part of that in terms of on, the wait. Uh, religious, um, spiritual thing is some people have taken those ideas and then distorted them and you end up in a cult where they're using the psychological tools to make you adhere to their society. And part of it is they have to keep it closed. And to them. And to them. And but in but it's the same thing. I mean, and again, you go through history, you know. And even though in most cases you had open societies, but they really weren't because let's face it, you got you were going to get killed if you go outside the wall. So let's build a wall around the whole thing so we can defend ourselves. So they were self fulfilling, you know, isolated human events. Where did the idea of force? There you go. So uh, explain it this a little bit to me when lucas mm-hmm. says oh the themes about uh or we know what you think about your dad we know what you think of, like what is he talking about there is he talking about like a darkness or like some sort of an idea that like uh, um a boy ultimately wants to i don't know uh be more important than his dad not i'm not saying like not kill their well dad. there there's actually there's actually a good thing that you brought up in that so yes there is the battle the tyranny the tyranny become, comes when the apprentice thinks it's greater than the master. That's the path to the dark side. That's the one that Anakin yeah. Skywalker took to become Darth Vader. He believed he was greater than all of his previous masters, right? That he was the chosen one. But he took it, he took it to the point where it was an isolated, self-reinforcing, everyone on the outside of me, outside of this wall, is, is my potential enemy and threat, right? And who does he end up trusting is the person that ended up betraying him. And, and, and really, if you look at it from the emperor's point of view to Vader, is that Vader is submissive to the emperor and the yeah. emperor is, and the emperor is willing to kill Vader, sacrifice him to have his seed be his next apprentice. That's how fucked up this shit gets, right? True. That's that's in a galaxy far, far away, long, long ago. Well, hell no, it's not. It's happening right here. Mm -hmm. And that's the I don't mean it like we're all in Star Wars, but 
I would say that we had a new hope. We're in, we are understanding that we are in Empire Strikes Back right now. And there's going to be the return of the Jedi this time. It's almost like if George Lu Lucas like really wanted to provide a message to humanity through Star Wars and then and there's why? lots of people and there's lots of people that are very unhappy with the direction that uh I mean, Disney that, that, right, that <laughs> Disney has taken Star Wars with the with the um the last few yeah, films the, and it's uh, almost the, like it's like oh we got to distract we've got it like if he was trying to communicate a message to humanity Mm -hmm. it, it, it seemed like he was doing a good job of it. Like not really about one religion. Let's not all get mixed up in who belongs to what team, who's, who's on what side, what religion, whatever it's, this is like a commentary on all of humanity, good versus evil. Mm -hmm. um, and the, and the path to become an enlightened person was Luke Skywalker's journey from a farm boy who sought adventure outside of himself to wanted to go fight the empire. Boy, did he get, the riot of his life to get into that cockpit and have to save the whole world and have the faith take the leap of faith and turn off his his targeting machine mm -hmm. so there's that one and then he falls into empire where everything is inverted everything is wrong all of his approaches are off all of the things that he tries are half gestures at best and he you see that because of yoda and all that and you come into jedi and i'm only saying this because from empire to jedi is the like darkest of the greek tragedy that the very man that he's going to go kill for taking his mentor away and wanting to wreak havoc on the galaxy and kill everyone he finds out that it's his father and is in absolute disbelief and has to take in this lesson of failure, it's really a lesson, it's not a failure because he didn't give up. He took a greater leap of faith backwards beyond what was humanly possible, literally leaping himself off of the, 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 you know, the platform into the abyss to not join darkness. This is, I mean, this is the story, if you wanna look at biblical divinity, you're literally having Satan there offering Jesus Christ the world to rule the galaxy with him together. You know, all of this can be yours. It's all there in the Bible. These are these are truths that that manifest over and over and over again. The, the, what I want to say is that all of these stories have themes in them that are universal. That's what he was talking about. These archetypes that have transcended time. Obi-Wan Kenobi is an archetype for what? Grandfather who's passed his physical, you know, vitality prime that Luke represents is his old younger self when all the world was before him. And now he's seen such harsh things and he's gone into retreat and once again is somehow divinely connected to the, the, the little boy that he handed off to them long ago, right? I mean, these are like beautiful stories that have such tragedy to them. And yet we play them too in our own metaphors for all the different things that happen in life. And um, we're given choices, you know, and, and paths to go down that on the whole, even Luke Skywalker, if you take the whole arc of the thing into Jedi, where I could dissect that for an hour, but the point being is that he goes to his father, he tried it one way, and then he tried it a new way. And the new way wasn't clearly known that the outcome for which he was hoping would occur would actually happen, but he would not fight his father. He wouldn't kill his father. And, and he had every reason to want to. And, 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 and that those feelings that he felt before, you know, it wasn't like he became warm to him because he was his father alone. He still wanted to, you know, walk off the stage and not have to deal with this fact that this man was his father. Now he can kill his own dad. And then they're like, well, then the emperor has won, right? So he had to hold on to a belief beyond what he had previously, think about it like this. He had never previously seen this person who is the embodiment of evil to ever have a behavior or a change of heart in anything that he did. And yet he went up this is what Lucas is talking about. He went up 
to a man that if it was a stranger, have no problem killing him. The right. fact that there's a father behind all of that, he took like, on the entire empire. Good. And like you want the idea that your dad could have a second chance. Like uh, your child in you does every single day, no matter what they did to you. And I could point out endless child abuse cases that I've read where the child does not blame the parent. It blames itself. So yes, this is where these monsters come in because they understand the paradox there. And it, and it's, it, it works for great literature and it works for great movies to show you these truths, these universal truths and story. But the reason why they're going where they're going with propaganda is because they don't, they don't have any more magic left in that category. They can't, they can't perceive the divine. They're becoming more dim. They're becoming more concentrated into their themselves. The narcissistic. I like, I like Simon's comment here that modern audiences aren't smart enough to understand anything philosophical, so we get the force of the. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you get a reboot, remake, prequel, sequel, rehash, a watered down version of the same thing that you saw once before. This was good uh, too. Luke Skywalker yeah. had to go on a journey, unlike Ray, who was automatically perfect in everything. <laughs> he didn't have this a is is this the guy who does the drinker, the critical movie drinker that you had no, on your show? No, no, he's. Uh, I, I, I would be sending him an invite if he was in the chat right now. I love. Oh Ray no, Ray. but this is exactly what this guy. I, yeah. I, I listened to him, and one of the things he he just went you would that shit crazy. Too. Biden winning the election was the empire. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, no, the whole country except for you know people who didn't know what the hell was going on and only saw it from their own point of view which i don't like at this point i'm just telling you like i don't know what your audience's opinions are i i i see all of the online stuff and the hatred of the left um and i i just got to tell you something like i was one of those people you were one of those we were all there one day right and just, just like, l let's just step back for a second. It's like you and I got through that time warp together. There were many people who took exits before, you know, that, oh, this is too Tell much. How many years you're talking about? The, I'm talking the about election. from the time Trump was elected to 2020, okay. there was okay. a shift in this country. And th this is what I just tell people. So, okay, 81, I'm going to take everything at face value, 81 million votes. The, this duo, this duo of Biden and Harris got 81 million votes. Why? Okay, let's go back. Most Joe Biden. Ever. Joe Biden went through ten Democrat debates, ten, and you can go back until they're going to erase them off of Google. You can't find them. And search mm -hmm. the results from the media of those ten debates. He didn't win a damn one of them. Not one did he win. He was polling in fifth and sixth place heading into Iowa. Kamala Harris, his vice president who was this dream team ticket dropped out of the Democrat candidate race two months before a single vote was cast. She couldn't even make it onto the ballot in Iowa. You're going to sit there and tell me that these two unpopular people with their own party's base won 81 million votes to win over the country. No, no, John, everybody hated Trump. You, you got to remember all this. It's like, so much so that he won 11 and a half million more votes than in 2016. I want to know where those votes came from because they weren't the holdover 5% Republicans that gave him 11 million more votes. They came from Santa's workshop. And people sit there and go, well, the Republicans cheat. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> mail-in ballots. Just stuffing this shit in there in the middle of the night. You're going to sit there and like and argue with me that now. any of this yeah. shit is legitimate. The number of, of illegal immigrants that are being dumped into, into red cities every day, but, but given here, their here, free phones. Here, here's what I'm saying. This is what I'm trying to, but, but this is the thing. Cause Chrissy, I go into this often and I can end up being on a no, rant to, oh, of keep you on track. No, no, no. And I'm not, I'm not going there anymore. In the past, I probably would have. But what I'm saying is I, I pulled I myself. I love your rants. I love them. You know what? But I, I had to pull myself back because I was finding myself chasing all of this and getting stirred up and worked up and, and okay. anxious and, okay. and okay. not focusing on the things that were important. There are people that are committing suicide around me now that I know closely 
or through another friend that is that you would be a friend with or i might it, th there's people saying goodbye cruel world and and what what this all ties into this is why i guess i wanted to bring this up with the disney stuff you you, you i want to put it all together for you this is an energy of a psychopath um, this is a narcissistic energy. This is what was raised when you see when you terrify people with the fear of dying for which there is a, a threat that they can't see. Hmm. You are now cutting off the joy of the present moment, the illusions of a future that they have a trajectory on. You have stopped all of that shit literally overnight and have re re reset everybody on these other trajectories for their impulsive behavior. Look, there were four and five star athletes over the last two years that were on track to graduate and compete in college. And they are now drug addicted, obese, some of them dead. <clears throat> we celebrate sports in this country in the youth. Uh, this is what I'm saying. These are all distract. Everything they're giving you is a fucking distraction while all of this other shit is going on. The 160, on <laughs> right. The, the 160 million people that are slipping into extreme poverty created by this time is going to be served by the UN in the 2030 agenda because they've mm -hmm. created the problem. And now they have to provide a solution by getting these people adequate housing, healthcare, whatever their programs are going to be. The point being is this, none of this shit matters because if all we do is watch all of this hell unfold, and we don't commit to making this a safe world for all children, none of this shit is going to matter when it's done. Because I looked at this very carefully, and I'm not here to sell anyone. But nobody right now wants to live in this world. Not well, even I the people think... that are masked. I'm talking on the whole. The whole? I don't the know. I think, there's, I think there's people that are hopeful. I, there's people still having kids. Oh. There's... Th that's that's that is absolutely what we need. Uh, the messaging not, we've yeah. been getting is 100%. Don't bring a child into this world. Right. I say it all the time. Overpopulation is a psyop. They've been feeding us that lie for mm. years now in many different ways. Like, oh, there's already too many people. And then like, and Elon Musk brought this up. Like you look at every uh, like birth trending chart and everything's going down. Yes, like, yes we're they're not dipping. Even at, we're not they're, even they're, at... um you know, re replenishment levels. So there's, so, there's way more messaging out there. Like, eh, you're not special. Eh, your DNA is, is nothing special to pass on. Eh, men yeah. are, men are trash. Women are trash. Why Social, bother? cultural engineering. Yeah. They're just, they're bottoming it out. They're cashing out everything that they have. Um, so if you look at like, just for the woke kids and I don't even like calling them that, but the ones that they ever always labeled, um, you know, Antifa, BLM, the rest, the pronoun you just slump gang. in there. Yeah. The pronoun gang, the transgender. And so this is what I was saying is that all of those kids are identifying with little Nas X. They're defending him. They're telling Christians that the only reason why you're uh, upset with his satanic, you know, they don't call it that. The only reason why you're upset with his art is because you're uh, a racist and yeah, homophobic. Cool. And, but, but the thing is you can't change how they feel. Yeah, they feel that way. And, and, and the thing is, is it's not a one way street with this. Um, I've met plenty of kids during this time who were raised in religious homes, Christian homes who were abused by their mother and father. And they're turning to Satanism as a logical conclusion to find answers in a world that hates them. And, and I, what I'm saying is, is that all of these kids, the, the, the thing is, there is nothing wrong with any of, when I say what I'm about to say, just understand where I'm coming from. None of these kids who want to mutilate their bodies know what the hell they're doing. If they knew what they were doing to themselves, they would stop immediately. We are imprinting all of this pornographic culture, which I am not, again, I used to hang out at the strip clubs. I was among porn stars. I loved these girls because they were prisoners in some way, the ones that didn't make it to the expos. I'm talking about the gonzo shit that happens out in the middle of nowhere. And these girls come from all over the world don't speak a lick of English, don't have IDs. 
Uh, they're, they're taken on trips and enslaved to work off the debts for free. Gonzo pornography is not the nicest of things. These are violent films. And this was going on all the way back when I, I lived out there for 19 years. I was around all of it. And uh, it's such a wasteland because the, the ones that are celebrated, I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm, this is the thing. You're not talking about like commercial porn stars and like the fun, like the uh, AVN. No, no, uh, no. Like sex trafficking, pretty much. I'm not some dude that is going to be out there as a moralist legislating. Like here's here's the complexity of issues. Okay, of all the things that could we relate to sex trafficking, conservatives don't you ever dare close down a strip club unless it's run by organized crime, which is a hard one, right? There are people out there who are not involved in organized crime. And the reason I'm saying is don't close the strip club down is because that is probably one of the safest places for girls to go who don't get trafficked outside of that place. They have a bodyguard. They've got some, it's not the ideal situation. And a lot of girls who work there are working there until they can get out of an, an abuse. They're, it's an in-between place. There are very yeah. few people that, that that's no, look, 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 this is nobody's plan A. And I even say this on behalf of the girls that are, you know, your friends, and I'm not even, it's not even like making an excuse. What I'm saying is there was no intention for them to arrive at this point where they have to deal with all this shit, right? They just wanted to have their life, do the things that give them joy as they're trying to figure out their own existence in this crazy fucked up world. And then say, you know what, you're going to target like these guys that are coming after these girls and stalking them. They have deep mother issues, serious ones that are putting all their projection. But the thing is, is that if you go and just fault the man and you don't see what the child once was and why he's seeking out his mommy in a very unhealthy way that she has to obey him or he'll kill her. You know, that's where I understand, like, you don't condemn these girls and, and even these men who are caught up in this industry. It's no different than the actors in my, my, I don't condemn any of those actors because I don't know their heart and mind entirely, where they're thinking, where they're at, what they've seen, what they've grown up with, what's been normalized for them and their family. Britney Spears and all those people didn't just come into Hollywood and have all that shit happen to him. And then the parents found out later and said, oh my God, this is terrible. Dan Schneider and all of that stuff is going to come out at some point with Nickelodeon and Disney. And Disney is the same group that owns ABC News that covered up the Epstein story that was leaked on Project Veritas three and a half years ago with Amy Robach on an off, you know, off mic yeah, yeah, that was so bad. Everybody can go back and watch that, and you just tell me that's also the same lady who's sitting there on Good Morning America with that doctor every day talking about the next COVID update. And uh, this is the thing I'm telling you. Cool. Look, if you hate, but this is what, it, what, it, what I want to say it because it needs to be said. You have to work through your hatred of these people. You cannot stay remaining hateful of them, or that you're going to be trapped, and yeah. they're going to win, and they're going to they're going to take your life with it. You, you, you have to create something during this time. I mean, I'm, I know there, Chrissy, you're, you're thriving during this time because you're creating something. You, you see what I'm saying? It's not, Oh, I got to do, you mean I got to get a podcast? And I'm no. And I'm working out again. Exactly. You're doing things to better yourself. You're not letting all this other shit happen around mm -hmm. you affect you in such a way that it, it paralyzes you. Well, yeah, you can't, um, I don't know. I feel some sort of a responsibility to like connect my audience with interesting people such as mm -hmm. yourself, and people who know more than me and are working in areas that I'm not. I don't know. Yeah. It's like a sense of duty, I guess. I don't know. Of course, like, and to also have fun while doing it. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't have to like, I mean, not it's not all... episode, cause John is super serious. No. <laughs> so do super serious. No, I, I do. I mean, I go there in my own place and I don't, you know, try to take everybody you know, just into a dark night into the soul. But um, I just think that we have to start thinking at a different level on how we get, where is the land? Where is the food? Where is the clean water? Where are the solutions? 
Um, I'm just going to propose people go to coreysdigs.com and look up solutions tonight. You just, just hit her, get, get, get subscribed. Her, Catherine Austin Fitz, this is a good network of people who are informing what's going on. The agendas, the real ones, the transgender agendas. There's a four-part series on there. You can find all the funders, all the organizations, the entire six-decade-long agenda to get us to this in transgender. Six decades of funding and exploration. And this doesn't even cover the shit that Epstein was involved with, with mutilation of bodies and changing them genetically. Uh, um, these guys, hard. this is how they really, I mean, they just, so this is how they really feel. Go ahead. This, um, the super chat from Barb Rogers, the new world order is already here. You are just given the illusion of countries while wars are being played out on the world stage to socially engineer you into accepting a one world government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Woo! So cycle. That's that is an intelligent human being because correct See? you psychologically Smart have viewers. to precondition people to yeah. accept the new yeah. paradigm. Oh, what's going on in Ukraine is it has to be our business and we need to be obsessed with it. And and this is how we all need to feel. Your identity is in all yeah. of the things that they're promoting, right? It's like what the right. hell has Ukraine ever done for me? I don't give a shit. Like I got I'm just trying to pay my own bills. Why do I need to throw up a yellow and blue flag? What the fuck? They don't care what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, the only thing I wish to, you know, I, we could talk about this for hours, but I do want to move on. I mean, if you do, and, and I think we can talk about other things, but um, I just want to tell people like whatever happens out there, um, just know that it isn't the true nature of humanity to do this to itself. It never was. Your parents, I, I'm just saying is on the whole, your parents were children like you were one day long ago before the world came in their world, which was two world wars, a great depression, um, no coping mechanisms for PTSD. Uh, sexual abuse was not talked about. You had high, like conservatives. I, I'm just Nobody using was this going to therapy. Like 1950s yeah. America nuclear family was not the image that everybody remembers it as there was a lot of sexual abuse. There was a lot of alcoholism. There was a lot of Lucy rule. Yeah. There were not organizations to raise awareness about drunk driving, um, alcohol, alcoholism and sexual abuse do have a higher correlation, um, together. It doesn't mean definitively. Um, but it, it, it's look, I know too much to like, I could sit here and talk about this for hours and how they've concentrated all of this, you know, to normalize the consumption of spirits and alcohol, get you dancing. So you get shaken and moving those vibrations around and those energies around. And they really play in that world. And you just got to be very understanding that a lot of people don't have that awareness yet, but they're going to come into that awareness that all of the things that people in this system of death offer you do so with a very kind and friendly face. They want to take it into the digital world, which will basically be the psychopath's perfect weapon because it's a non-feeling entity, AI, that they want to get off the ground, but they're going to use technology because the what has happened with this authoritarian energy is it's a unconscious trauma-based mind control awakening. This is what your, your uh, super chat friend gave you. So what they have done is they have awakened the unconscious traumas of our childhoods. And you're seeing them play out in the streets of America right now on one stage. Then there's going to be other ones because um, this is what they do. And what I'm telling you is, is that there is going to be a period of upheaval. How long that will last and where it will go is really up to us in terms of how much energy we give it, how we respond to it, because there is a future being forged, but it's also who can take control of the and reestablish order first in the midst of the chaos that they're sowing. This is the Great Reset. They've done this. This is a very old program. They've been doing this all throughout time and space and history. They, when they, uh, when the human consciousness rises because the divine is coming in at a higher rate, it begins to cause them a loss in the 
time that they have created the reboots, remakes, prequels, and sequels to hold you in this pattern, right? When that breaks down, there is no more story to tell. They can't forge a new way in human history other than to take it right into the transhumanist agenda and put you all in a new digital prison. It's a shitty proposition, but they're going to cancel out your belief in the financial system, your educate everything that you're seeing, like Disney, here's a, a microcosm. The majority of people in Disney don't believe it, but the ones that still do will stay there. They are concentrating, they're purging. They're purging all of the, the la all of the doctors and nurses who left. They're purging all the ones who have any moral conscience or don't, not even that. That's what they want you to believe. It's the ones who don't know what they're doing and what they're serving. The majority of people, the majority of people, this, is, this has got to be said and got to be repeated to the right all the time. The majority of people who are on the left that support this compassionate messaging to trans kids and all of that do not see the satanic deceptions that are going on. Right. They don't see what you they see. They think they're being empathetic and helping yeah. like uh, confused or less fortunate, you know. They gave they gave the, the, these assholes gave them QAnon for 4 years. Okay? And and I'm just telling you this because you 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 guys forget but it stayed, it's, it's part of the story that they're following. It's the lie that they believe is true. We're in a world of belief now. We're not in a world of facts. We're, we're no longer in a world of facts anymore where we can argue our side of the case and convince other people to come over just because of what we tell them. We have to show them. We have to be the embodiment of these things that we say we are, that we, we are better than. We can't, we can't out, we can't meme this out of existence. We can't vote this out of existence. We can't dispel it and just banish it and go off on a, you know, intentional community and ignore it because, and just think that it's going to play itself out and be okay with it all because it's all divinely timed and everything else. It's like, uh, I take a look at what the church wants you to do. The church, the Catholic church, and to an extent influenced by Christianity tells you that you're supposed to be like Jesus. You're supposed to live like him because he was the perfect man. And I'm, I'm not putting down Christ here. I'm, I'm, I'm raising him up. But what I'm telling you is they tell you that and then they hold up this cross and this man hanging from it, suffering. And they say, be like him, but don't, you don't want to end up like him. Mm. Be like him, but you don't want to end up like him. Now, the thing is this, is that when you follow, and I'm not a theologian, but I'm just, I'm here to pose a question for you. People believe in revelation. It's right there in the Bible, right? Tells you what's going to happen in the end days. Hmm? How it'll all go down. I haven't read okay, it so people are starting to look at that, right? They're starting to go, uh, there's some similarities here. Yeah, I would say so when you have states that are trying to push infant side as a logical support, uh, like a, a logical conclusion of what abortion needs to continue to grow and develop into. We need to kill babies two weeks outside of the womb. And they're going to make the, I tell you right now, they're going to make the case in the mental, the, the, the mental health of the mother oh, right. of is course. why they will have to kill it. This is no different than what? The Canaanites? who just read history, offer your firstborn to be sacrificed. Ooh, wow. I'm not fucking around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got my ass out there and I, I saw what was going on. And I'm just telling you all, like, you don't have to be like me. I had to conquer my fear of dying last year because I was terrified of the Rona or something else? No. I did a video. Some of your audience knows why we were first put on together. And I mean, actually, right before that happened in August, August 2020, I was on your show when all this stuff exploded about Ghislaine Maxwell and our movie, A Child's Voice, is taken off of Amazon unpublished. Oh, right. 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 And and that was where the whole thing had started. It. And I went live on Instagram. Um, after, 
that day and and it was i was only going to just say a few things i had 700 followers i now have 30,000 i mean I, I, it's not the number but overnight it just like surged and i have tracked that video down now uh, at least 100 to 150 million people have seen it and still get shared to this day by general flynn and a whole host of other people um that movie has been seen by at least 5 to 10 million people that i know um, not that I, that a lot of those were pirated, uh, you know, but, uh, the people that contributed went to our site, supported it. Um, I guess what I'm saying is I said a lot of things in that 38 minute video that if I knew how the story was going to end, I probably would have chicken shit it out because I said a lot of things that put a target on my back and, um, not that I hold any really deep secrets other than just to tell you, I know who these people are and I know it because I, I examined my own trauma in childhood and I saw the parallels to all of it. And I, I have to tell you something, Chrissy, this is not easy. Um, but I had to find unconditional love and I did for my mother and father who had damaged me so badly as a child that I'm 43 years old, I'll be 44. Uh, I've never been married. I don't have any children and I'm not sad about that fact in the fact that I accept why it couldn't have happened. Um, with a mentally ill mother and both of them abusing me sexually as a child before I could remember, you're set on a trajectory to find all of the distortions that the world offers you that is outside of yourself and you feel disconnected and numb uh and you have to like if you if you if you know how these people are they become bored and have to seek out more intense pleasures and pains so i was not one of those people thank god but i saw all of those behaviors and the traces tracing them back to where they began in me. And what I did was I started working with somebody every single day who held my hand and loved me unconditionally. She, she is the greatest human being I've ever had the pleasure of knowing and have never met in person. And yet she has talked with me almost every single day for the last year and taken on all of my shit and if I had given you a total rap sheet of what I had done to her, you'd say, fuck that guy. He doesn't deserve jack shit. And that's John Paul. And that's John Paul Wright. No, it's just that what I had done was I thought that my awareness and so everybody, you know, looks at me and says, my God, he's just such a nice guy. And I am. I'm all of those things. But I really studied and examined my dark side for the last 20 years while being in LA and looking back on that movie, I see all of the similar themes in me and every single one of these children. And it's not that I take that on as a load in my, I did before and I, I realized it's not going to help me at all. It'll hurt me. But what I, what I saw in it all was that there's no difference about any one of us, including those who are dim. I hate to say it to people that there's really only a very small, small, small number of people in this world really who are consciously evil. And even the pedophile, which is not to make excuse. Yes, you have to stop them. Yes, you definitely have to stop them, but you cannot kill your way out of this problem and they want you to. If, if the right follows their trajectory the way they have it planned, which I don't think is a good idea, you are not going to condemn all these people to death and think you're going to, number one, get rid of the problem. Number two, there will be celebrations. And number three, um, what you've done is you've created a permanent victim class, which is exactly what they want. You've created martyrs out of pedophiles for their mm -hmm. satanic cult that they are bringing into existence. And what I'm 
what I'm trying to say is this, that doesn't have to be the world that you and I live in. If you make this world a safe world for all children, run everything you do through that filter from here on out. Doesn't mean you have to start a charity. Doesn't mean you have to donate 10%. It just says, I am conscious of all the choices I'm making. And it's not about feeling guilt and shame for all the things. This is what they want. You just have to free your mind. You have to come online to understand that you were born divine before all of this shit happened. You didn't sign up for this on a conscious level, but something brought you to the moment where you're going to literally watch all of this unfold and you're going to play a role in the greatest story ever told. It's Star Wars. It's epic. It's every movie that you've ever seen that's epic. It's The Matrix. It's epic. Pick your avatar. Figure out what it is that's going to make possible the truth to come into fruition by you embodying it and being the model that is needed around you in your community rather than the people looking on social media or on television for a hero and an icon that they can dress like, act like, imitate. Yeah, you're like saying just be the best version of you for like your that's it. people. You're, you're a small sphere of influence. Um, and ultimately, that's all we have control over. It's just like a hundred percent. This is the yeah. reality. Your universe is what you have control over. That's their world and let them go on with it. But, but even the people that will later wake up are going to be looking to you going, well, uh, if you knew all this, what, what did you, you didn't do anything to help like build anything or create anything like, like if, if four years go by and we wait till 2024 or, you know, like, and, and nobody has thought, I mean, I'm not saying people aren't, but like take virtual virtual reality. There's virtual the reality metaphor. porn. There's oh. virtual reality porn. There's VDR chat, which is really dangerous. And there's people out there speaking out about this pedophilia stuff spreading on the metaverse. But that's their game. Our game is to take virtual reality and create programs in it to heal people to bring them closer to themselves, to humanity. We can use technology as a bridge to do this. We can train nurses and doctors how to better care for children, even though they may come from- Hold on, the dog is peeing what? on the bed. What oh my God. Peeing? Oh my God, Waffles just peed on the bed. Maybe he just didn't I'm like what so I was saying. <laughs> I'm watching her scratch and I have never seen that. Oh my God. Yeah. Frank's not even down here. There's nobody I can... God damn it. She looked right into my eyes and peed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Who does this? This has never happened. Uh-oh. <laughs> Somebody doesn't like us talking know. about this. <laughs> now, Muffin, the other dog, is just sitting on the bed, like, basically shaking her head, like... Mm. Told you not to bring it. Oh, it smells. It smells like pee. Oh my god. Do you do you need to do All you right, need to take sorry, a break? Sorry. Your thought. I'm gonna text Frank. Okay. Keep talking. No, I mean that's <gasps> weird. She looked right into my face and pee. This has never happened. She got excited. Bits. She got excited once and by accident peed on the bed. But this one was like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my god. Why She's aren't you giving me love? So consciously. <laughs> She was digging, 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 digging. I'm like, she digs all the time. What are you going to find? There's nothing in there. It's like mm. the bed is made. What is she digging for? Oh, my mm. God, though. I'm sorry that happened. That's crazy. It's funny. I mean, it really sm smells. <laughs> like she's, she's house trained. Like, she goes out. Was she looking? She was staring at you in the eyes as she's like, taking a piss? Like, yeah, yeah dude, what are you going to fucking do about it? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. Whew. Chrissy, what do you think? I mean, I know I throw a lot at people. I think I'm going to have to do laundry. That's what I think. Um, yeah. I'm sorry to derail. Uh, no, I wanted we're to bring fine. this up because this is relevant. Uh, yeah. From Young Pei Chang. Hey, Chrissy, just popping in. Mr. Rice, have you gotten in touch with Elijah Schaefer? You guys have somewhat similar vibes to me. Yeah, I should uh, introduce you to. Okay. He's out in Texas on the Blaze. Um, he he does a show. Uh, well, it does a couple of shows for the Blaze. Slightly offensive, and you are here. 
um I would but love, like similar I mean, like talking about similar like religious themes and mm -hmm. um, you guys care about the same stuff it seems <clears throat> Yeah, I'm I'm familiar with his. I mean, I've seen clips of him on social media, especially with you. I think you've been on there with him. Uh, Alex has been on. Alex Stein's been on there with him. Thank you for that, uh, Young P. Young P. Chang. I've been saying Young Pay, but I don't. Young Pay. All right. Oh my God, hold on, Frank. She just she scratched, scratched, scratched. Looked right at me and then started peeing, like squatted and <laughs> on the bed right there in your spot. <laughs> Oh my God! I know so she's crazy. just peed a lot. Like we're dealing with something right now. Ah. She peed on Frank's side. Oh, oh, like, territorial! Fully. She's like, I'm sleeping here tonight. Out? I have no idea. I don't know what's going on over your house. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on in your in the dynamic she, of your life. She's like ten months old. We've had her since like September never mm -hmm. like she'll pee on the pee pads that are by the door like she'll or she'll pee like on the floor when she gets excited when somebody comes home a little like squirt but never this like deliberate like <laughs> like like she had like one eye raised you know like bitch she what are you looked, <laughs> that's a that's that's a mood yeah maybe she's going through something <laughs> Damn, though. This Jupiter Neptune thing, man. It's like, you know. <laughs> What's with the you eye know. contact? The astrology. I thought we were like really, we were like cuddling and like vibing. Oh, you were tight? <laughs> well. Yeah. Uh, this is from the Admiral. And I blame my parents for their abuse. See, we've all, we've all yeah. like gone through shit. I, I, um, yeah, I don't think it's the blame. Uh, that's really where I'm talking about. Um, it's and, and it's not you you don't i guess what i want to say is you don't mass market this as like this is what you have to do because if you had told me like i'm just saying for myself if you had told me two years ago that i would be understanding things at the level that i do it took somebody else outside of me to show me that for which i lack seeing she was able and I mean this because she was able to see past that mask. She was able to see past the the issue and into my soul. I mean that in like a, a, a way that I did not afford her any deeper understanding of me. I would cut her off from accessing that part of me when I got defensive or triggered. And I didn't realize how automatic it was and what that created that, that without, it's a narcissistic behavior. It's a self-defense mechanism. And I guess what I'm saying on a deeper traumatic level is that if you look at the new age, what they're going to do, this is just an example. It's the narcissistic spiritual ego that is basically projecting a world that is unworthy of them outside of them because it's all fucked up. And so they'll measure themselves and their identity with they, them, because I've literally watched this happen on a couple of channels where the girl, she's young, beautiful, educated, and she's talking about her spirituality and there's nothing wrong with anything that she's saying. And then, then she turns and says, and then when I got my pronoun, they, them, I felt like I could be more of myself. And what that showed me had nothing to do with that agenda. It had everything to do with the fact that an agenda like that with just a word could come along and capture a person and their identity and self-worth in just a word. And that was the real tragedy there because that means that somebody failed her in her life, that she could be so, taken in by a word, by a symbol, yeah, by, by a symbol by an icon, by an idol, by a cult. Like that's it. That's all it took. Yeah. That's all it took for her belonging to feel valid was a name. And what I'm saying is, is that that is an indicator of something deeper that we are not looking at. And we can talk about game day in this way because it's a more palatable thing. Um, the movie Game Day, which um, I made last year in Philadelphia, was about an Italian-American family 
based on a real script, a real family from Dean Simone, co-writer and the star who is phenomenal as an actor. Uh, if you want to play the trailer, that's just a little yeah, teaser there. Yeah, 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 yeah let's do it. I Why love not? this trailer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you can turn up the volume a little bit. Who is that? Michelle. She is not coming here. She only going to stay a couple hours. I don't care if she stays a couple of minutes. I don't want her here. Don't start that paranoid. Paranoid? I see the way you look at her when she visits. Everybody sees it. It is so obvious. Well, what's wrong? Did Dad say something? All right, let's just get through today. Yo, Jamie! What the hell is wrong with that wife of yours? You better get those stupid ideas right out of your head. He doesn't care how I feel. Why should I care how he feels? Speaking of which, nobody cares about anybody in this family. I don't know. What the hell happened to this family? You have ruined everything. We built a really safe life. But something was missing. This yep. looks so good. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great movie. Uh, the people that have made that film, uh, it's as authentic Philadelphia as you're going to get with an all Philadelphia cast. Um, why Philadelphia? This, why Philadelphia? Because the guy Dean, he's an actor in uh, L.A. Great actor. Uh, he came from a multi-generational family of four, four generations of Philadelphia Italian-American family. And his grandfather or his great-grandfather, I believe, uh, played for the team before it became the Eagles. Um, he's probably one of the most knowledgeable uh, sports fans in existence and definitely of Philadelphia. Like he knows everything about everybody, about everybody it's just ridiculous. Like he eats, breathes and drinks this all up. He was telling me stories about, you know, back in the day when the giant, when he was a kid, the giants and the Eagles would do exhibition games and there'd be more blood in the stands than there would be on the, the football field. These are people that threw snowballs at Santa Claus, uh, tried to get, uh, I think there was a time where the, 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 the trapeze guy, you know, was trying to go across the stadium and they're trying to like throw shit at him to make him fall. That's your Philadelphia Eagle fan. <laughs> They're pretty freaking crazy. And, you know, when they win the Super Bowl, they burn shit to the ground. But there's a brutality to them. And then there's also this heart that holds it all together. And that's what this family is all about. This is, uh, this is a movie that takes place over one day and a year later or two years later. And um, it's all about them coming together to watch their most hated rival, the Dallas Cowboys, the football game. But it's it's not about the football game. The football game is is playing along the defeat of this family. And this family is disintegrating and falling apart because nobody really cares about each other. But it's actually not true. They do care about each other. They just don't care enough about themselves. And so what they've all done is they've played these roles uh, for years and everybody is hiding the truth. And finally, the truth begins to be spoken. And everybody actually speaks the truth, but they don't realize they're talking about themselves. They think it's a projection mm -hmm. and a perception. It's what makes great drama. It's not literal. It's the unconscious trying to work itself out. And so in this movie, it's really beautiful because you see the story build, 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 and escalate, and it pop, explodes, not just in anger, but in all ways tears as well and it's like real life drama and then there's real healing finally why because all the family secrets are finally out and being debated and talked about and they're not being held in and they're not being 
How created as love. Yeah. It's cathartic. It's a cathartic film. If you if you like, this is that's where I tell people. It's like if you like movies that make you think and feel with all the shit that's out there. I'm not saying you're going to get the best, you know, pie you've ever tasted, but I, I'm telling you, there's something in there for everybody. I really and mean. You, I, I, and you did I this challenge all by yourself. Yeah. I'm like, you did this all by yourself. And this time, yeah. I remember you were talking about, uh, yeah, like, as this was in production, and it was just yeah. like, I was so excited. I can't believe it's out now. I know. Uh, I can't. I'm excited. Uh, people, people who are seeing it watch this. Yeah. So there's game day, the movie.com. Uh, you can go there. You can go to no restrictions, ent.com. It's right there. You can watch it on Vimeo on demand. You can rent it. I think it's three 99 and nine 99 to own anywhere in the world. And then there's Amazon uh, USA. Amazon is the same price. Uh, but if you have, you know, Amazon, you use that. That's fine. I totally understand Vimeo on demand. You got to set up your own, you know, card and, or PayPal. Um, but, but we get 80% of what you get on Vimeo. We get 50% of what you get on Amazon, but we understand people want their preferred platforms. We're going to be rolling it out later this year on other platforms like Apple TV. And cool. um, uh, I'm trying to think, but, but it's going to take a few months to get that. Yeah. Um, we have also our, our other movies and we can talk about, we can talk about game day. We can talk about our other movies, but We've got other films on No Restrictions, ENT. Uh, everything is seven seven films in 12 years. The first one, One Hour Fantasy Girl. The second one, Memories of a Lost Love. The third one, Mark's Secret to Eternal Life. The fourth one uh, was, hold on, A Nice Quiet Life. And then we did A Child's Voice, which is the one that we became pretty famous now, for. Did that one ever get put back onto Amazon? No. No. Um, and it's amazing that you're like you're the same person and now game day is on Amazon. I guess they didn't hold it against you with this new film. I mean, it's not easy to find like anything with my name, <laughs> anything with my name on it uh, out there is a little bit difficult to find other than, you know, like if you go to YouTube and you look up John Paul Rice, we'll come up with uh, film courage interviews, not the most recent you know, whatever YouTube and Facebook are pretty much censored us. Uh, I mean, just th that our reach is very limited, but the people that are discovering this movie, especially the ones in Philadelphia. And actually what's crazy is it's actually renting through Vimeo on demand all over the world. Wow. Um, I mean, I'm not saying like, you know, thousands, but I'm catching ones in Finland. Uh, That's really Slo cool. Yeah, that. it's like th this is what film is, guys. It's this universal, time, yeah, universal language. Yeah, I'm this is universal language. It's film, art, expression, drama. This, this, this is what makes like The Godfather. The Godfather still plays to this day. Casablanca. It's you all have films that you you remember are your favorites, and 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 uh, I'm telling you this. It's like don't don't give the up notebook. on the things that you love. The Notebook's phenomenal. <laughs> One of the best films ever made in the last 25 years, The Notebook. I want to run through a couple of these other super chats. Anyway, uh, yeah. Craig Staus, ask about The Expanse. Is this, mm. what do you, do you know what that is? Uh, I've heard of it. I don't follow everything, but let me just see what he's, he may want to know what I'm, I'm not going to make a, you know, like a sumptive opinion. <laughs> um, let me just see what this is. Expanse, a TV series uh, based on, oh, the series is set in a future where humanity has colonized the solar system. Oh, hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, all of these films and everything are done on the whole. I'm not saying it's all agenda, agenda, agenda all day long, but they, they I mean, at the very top, yes. All of this stuff is allowed to come through uh, because it's, when they say predictive programming, it's folks, they're not trying to say this is how the story is going to go. They're basically just showing you concepts that they're sewing into your mind as entertainment yeah. so that you retain that in your subconscious mind. And then when they bring out the similar metaphorical feature of it in the future, you'll, oh, you'll be accustomed to it. Like Contagion sets the stage for, you know, the movie Contagion years ago. 
If that my dad literally was here, is, he would say, that's why they call it television. They're telling a vision. 100% history. I mean, everybody's used these, you know, those cute little words, history, his mm -hmm. story. You know, it's like, yeah, fake news, fake history. I get it. And it's been going on for a long time. So we're never going to solve the mystery of this story because we're not meant to. <laughs> the story of the world is never going to be settled. I can track a line from Tartaria all the way to now and I can show it to everyone and Is everyone will say, Pearson? no, I'm just, no, no, no. But I, I was just thinking like somebody who's like, no, everyone yeah. needs to know that Tartaria was there. And, and I'm not, I'm not of taking a shit on any. Yeah. That's I'm not against any of those yeah. people. I think it's great that they tell everybody. Yeah. Okay, from Young Page is there a charity either of you would like to mention? I have some tax refund this year. Ooh. Oh, Young Page No, you, I mean, you throw in enough super chats to me. Don't, I, I don't know. I don't really, I would say well, buy John Paul Rice's uh, movie. No, I'm going to, uh, can I recommend one? Yes. All right. Actually, I'll give them two. There's two that you both should go look up. Uh, one's called uh, Ruby, the Ruby Organization. It's the Ruby. So the Ruby, R-U-B-Y org, O-R-G dot org, okay. right? The Ruby organization, I know her personally. Her name is Tracy and she runs that with um, two other women. Mm -hmm. They are all out of pocket, 100%. And what they do, this is, these are the real miracle workers out there. They go into strip clubs and help women get out of there. And they don't just get them out of there. They get them into life and they care for these women over years to help them rebuild their lives and make a life for themselves outside of that club because that's all they've known. That's been their home. That's their family. They don't have other families. These women are saintly in my view. And so if you want to tell them that I sent you, go support them. Ten, $10 a month, you can put it on your PayPal, a reoccurring thing. It will, they need like the, the kind of funds that they need. They don't need thousands of dollars. They just need hundreds, a few hundred extra dollars a month that will get them facilities and things that are just, you and I would take for granted and say, you can't run a business or an organization on, oh, these women do. And they're amazing women and their family. They have families on top of this. They do all this in their own time. So the Ruby organization is one. And then the other one is Ark of Hope for Children. Uh, that's a little lesser known one. That's Blair Corbett. Um, he is a, a man who, uh, he was the first one to uh, endorse a child's voice in a letter acknowledging that satanic ritual abuse does in fact occur. He's dealt with those cases. Um, this is a person who has uh, given their time to countless children, both worldwide, remotely, and in person to help uh, heal the trauma of child abuse. And what we're talking about is the kind of stuff where I'm not saying he's an end all be all guy, but he's a good support system where um, you have children that have been watching pornography since three years old. And that's pretty much opening Pandora's box. And this is the kind of work that is being done out there for where the, the parent who's seeking some kind of redemptive thing out of their child, they, they literally watch their child's soul dim and that the light inside of them is gone by five, six, seven years old. Um, these are the people that are, that are out there trying to help and they need your help. You really do. Okay, great. I will definitely yeah. put both of these, um, organizations info, uh, in mm -hmm. the description of this episode. Sure. Of course, John and I both know we could go on hours. Talking. We could, and I know you have a life and I do too, but. He's my, he's, he's my long winded warrior. No, I'm big <laughs> brevity, my friend brevity. Um, John, where can people find you and follow you other than following you on Twitter at no mm -hmm. restrictions and visiting no restrictions, .com. Mm -hmm. You can find me on Instagram. I'm probably there the most at no restrictions on gab. Some of the time at no restrictions. Um, that's where I kind of camp out my social media and storytelling. And, uh, you know, no restrictions ENT is our website. You can find all of our movies there. 
Child's Voice, Game Day, One Hour Fantasy Girl, Memories of a Lost Love, Mark's Secret to Eternal Life, uh, Nice Quiet Life. Um, you know what? I'm all for independent artists. This is your time to shine. You are able to create unique stories for the very first time, unencumbered. You have a digital audience of people, access to 5 billion people. You need a couple hundred thousand to support you financially in your endeavors of art that you create. You can practically reach the world now today just by plugging in other networks. Chrissy Mayer, I'm just saying, is she brings you on. She tells you about your story. You be as authentic as you are. I'm not telling filmmakers to flood you, Chrissy. But what I'm saying is, flood guys, me. you've got to go out there. This this time of exclusivity and gatekeepers and all that shit. No, break down the fourth wall and start talking to each other, uh, creating with each other, create new stories. You don't need anti-propaganda films. You just need to tell the truth. And the truth is nothing that's offered to you. The truth is in your heart. It's in your imagination. It's in the place of creativity. It gives you another, show me something I've never seen before. Show it to me in a way I've never seen it before. Show me that magic that I've been missing that inspires me and enriches me and helps me grow as a human being as I'm trying to figure out this life and what my existence is all about. That's what art is. It's the authentic expression of that. Your speech is the authentic expression of that. Be that it's authentic. Your perspective. It's your life. Yep. 100%. And I appreciate you letting me rant. Love you, John. <laughs> I love you guys. I, I always love when you come on. It's always a good time. And I feel like we we did a really good job of putting it in context with the current Disney drama. And then yeah. you're just you're just such a good example of somebody who is making incredible independent contact content. You know, I know a lot of people love, you know, e easy to mention, you know, Daily Wire making films, which is amazing. But there's mm -hmm. more than just, you know, there's more than just the bigger guys. So yeah. this is exciting. I can't wait to watch the rest of the movie. I'm going to probably have you back on to do another recap when I do watch it. All right. Um, thank you Let's so much go at it. And for your comments and questions. As always, love you guys. Thank you Until guys. next time. Bye.